Hi, I'm Robert Curtis. I'm the head instructor of the Distance Calculus program. In this video, I'm going to talk about Calculus 2. Calculus 2 uh, is a very long course. It's our longest course, and I'm going to describe why it is such. Um, let's say that this is the continuum of first year calculus first year calculus and it's normally broken up into three parts the first part here is this is on derivatives this part is on integrals and this part is on series something called series um, the textbook that we use, or the curriculum that we use, is called uh, Calculus and Live Math. And it's adapted from Calculus and Mathematica uh, by Porta, Uhl, and Davis. And this curriculum was started at the Ohio State University and the University of Illinois at Champaign-Urbana. And it's about 40 years old now. Uh, and, and has really stood the test of time. It's been used by probably hundreds of thousands of students by this time. Um, it is definitely a reform-based curriculum and not a traditional based curriculum. Uh, I'll talk more about what the differences are uh, between that. But the calculus and live math curriculum actually has its, its uh, um, books, and books is like in quotation marks, right? Because these things aren't really books. They are uh, electronic books. So these are um, the books that are in 1.0, these are in 2.0, these are in 3.0. This is kind of the section, module uh, area 1, area 2, and area 3. Um, and where does Calculus 1 fit into all of this? Well, it turns out that Calculus 1 actually goes to about here, Calculus 1, and not quite in the middle of 2.0. It stops just before maybe like you know, a third of the uh, of this spectrum here. And so this is calc 1, and then calc 2 is from here, all the way across. All right? Um, so part of the reason why calc 2 is longer is that it it is not from the halfway point, but it's actually sort of, you know, a little bit more than halfway. It's, it's uh, uh, two-thirds and three, so it's like five-thirds across here, whereas this is four-thirds. That's one of the reasons why Calculus 2 is much longer. Um, but also, when we do Calculus 2, if you did do Calculus 1 with us, then you do get to start here and go forward. Because you already started with us with Calculus 1, we know that you've gone up through 2.03, which is where we stop in the curriculum, and you just get to go keep going. But if you're starting in Calculus 2 with us fresh, uh, you've never done uh, calculus, uh, you've never done one of our courses, or you haven't done Calculus 1 with us, then we actually have you start back here and start fresh in the integration module right here, right at the beginning. Why? Because it's way too difficult, if you're not experienced with this, of starting midway or almost mid midway through this second book and then trying to keep going. So think of this as kind of a review uh, of uh, some of the topics of Calculus 1, technically Calculus 1. Um, if your skills in Calculus 1 are a little bit weaker, you can request that we give you some of the assignments, and I mean some, from this first book on differentiation. 
um, you know, like 10 notebooks or something to kind of give you a little bit more of you. Um, and this is only by request. For all the students, we generally start them right here at the beginning of this 2.0 book. So having this added on to the course makes it, yet again, even longer. Um, the, uh, the Calculus 2 course has about 120 assignments in it. The other part of the problem with Calculus 2 being longer is uh, what's called matriculation into other university programs. Um, calculus 2 is the stepping off point for going into differential equations, going into linear algebra, going into multivariable calculus. Uh, you know, three courses jump off of this spot. And so there are also some more stuff that's added in at the end of this course, um, some uh, topics that have to be in a Calculus 2 course because it is the jumping off point for these other sophomore level courses. So that's what contribute to making Calculus 2 the longest course that we offer, and it is the longest course. Um, this makes Calculus 2 a bit more difficult to finish quickly. Uh, if you are planning to take it over the summer, for example, and you have an accelerated schedule, you need to finish it more quickly than, uh, than traditionally done. Um, that makes it a little bit more challenging to try to get through Calculus 2 uh, on a quicker timeline. Um, you know, the fastest that you can probably do Calculus 2 is about eight weeks. That's about the, the fastest. I've seen some students do it in about six weeks. It's a very, very difficult six weeks. Um, never have I seen a student finish Calculus 2 in four weeks. So six weeks is really the world's record. Um, and it's a very, very long course. If you did not do well in Calculus 1, um, I suggest that we do a little bit more review here in Calculus 1 that you really ask for that review that will really help you move forward. If you feel that you need to repeat Calculus 1, my advice generally is no. You do not need to repeat Calculus 1. If you have taken Calculus 1 and you earned a grade of C or higher uh, in the course, even if it was years ago, even if you took Calculus 1 20 years ago, my general advice is that you do not need to go back and repeat Calculus 1. You can start in Calculus 2, and a few well-chosen review assignments from Calculus 1 will be more than sufficient to get you going. However, there are some cases where it does occur that a student starts in Calculus 2, they start on these beginning assignments on integration, and it becomes very clear to the instructor, usually me, that the student has not had Calculus 1, or they simply don't remember enough of it to really move forward. Now, sometimes the review assignments will be sufficient to help that student along and help that student go forward, uh, but sometimes, in some cases, in Calculus 2 it happens more than any other course, in some cases we actually have to ask the student to go back and do Calculus 1 again. That we actually change your enrollment from Calculus 2 back to Calculus 1 and ask you to do the Calculus 1 course first. We're not being mean when we do this. I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm certainly not being mean. I simply am able to recognize that a student who struggles so much in these beginning assignments and then, if given a few res review, review assignments in Calculus 1, based on those review assignments, if you really don't remember what's going on in Calculus 1, you will not succeed in Calculus 2. So I'm not being mean. I'm simply you know, being a very good um, diagnostic educator and saying, you need to, we're, we're really going to need to go back and do this course again. I'm sorry, but you really need to do that. Um, very few cases, you know, it's a couple of years, so it's not, uh, it's not a very common thing, but it does come up, it does happen. 
What's interesting is that the sophomore level courses after Calculus 2, even though Calculus 2 is a prerequisite for uh, differential equations, linear algebra, multivariable calculus, you don't really need to be uh, an A-plus student in Calculus 2 to succeed in those higher courses. It's just a funny quirk of the curriculum that you do need Calculus 2 as a prerequisite, yet you don't need to be an expert going forward in those courses. It's very strange, um, but for those higher courses, um, I'll discuss those higher courses in another video if you're interested in those higher courses. Um, so, getting through Calculus 2, the other part of Calculus 2 that is usually in most textbooks, in most courses, is this part on series. Um, the series stuff in a regular calculus textbook, it's, <clears throat> it's, usually, it's, it's very disjointed. It doesn't really combine with the sections on integration. Uh, it's like sitting out there and you really have no idea why you're doing it. And it's very, it's just very strange. It's, it's a different beast. You're really not doing integration in a traditional textbook. In the calculus and live math textbook, based on calculus and Mathematica, this connection is very serious. And the reason why you do this third module on series is because of the following sentence. While you can differentiate any function, <clears throat> you cannot integrate any function. It's just a fact of the universe. So many, many functions, in fact, most functions that you, uh, that you have, you cannot algebraically integrate them. You just can't do it. It's just bam. You cannot integrate them. And it turns out that series, the methods of studying series, actually allow you to approximate these integrals very efficiently. And that's the reason why you study series. And, and it is the reason why in traditional textbooks you are supposed to study series, but it's really lost on everybody. Nobody really knows. If you ever ask a student who has finished Calculus 2, and maybe you have already done Calculus 2, and you say, well, what's series for? And you say, ah, I don't know. There was like the integration test and the p-test, and I don't know, the series diverged. I have no idea what it was about. And in this curriculum, you will not be able to say that. You will say, I learned this stuff so that I could integrate any function that comes my way. And that is the reason why we learn series. Now, I will say in most traditional textbooks, the chapters on series are extremely difficult. They usually lower students' grades because they are so difficult and so strange. Um, I remember when I took Calculus 2, I, I remember like the first part <clears throat> of Calculus was the integration stuff was easy and then we got into the series stuff and I had no idea what was going on and I got a B in the class and it was it was very odd and I, I just had no idea and then later I learned oh this is so that you can integrate any function you want that's really cool that's useful and that's what this curriculum uh, really uh, goes through and teaches you so this is the calculus 2 um, it turns out that this last module here, even though it looks like it's much longer and harder, these authors did a fantastic job in this module here. Uh, just, this is just spectacular writing and, and spectacular presentation, and it goes so fast. Uh, students are just really amazed about how quickly it goes. and. Their understanding is just so fantastic. I really think this is one of the gems of uh, this curriculum is the, uh, the 3.0 area. So that's um, Calculus 2. It's, it's the Calculus and Live Math um, curriculum. And um, of course, the, it's, the idea is that we go with the uh, video lectures. This goes to what are called the basics and the tutorials out of this curriculum and then over to the homework. All right, and we'll talk more about 
this process of actually getting to the homework um, and discouraging you from, from reversing this process. Many students are very used to starting with the homework and then backing up in the textbook to try to figure out where did the homework come from and then backing up from the homework into the video lectures and that does not work at all. So you'll be wanting to stay this direction into this direction. Unfortunately, in this curriculum, I will say that the beginning part of this curriculum right here is the most difficult in all of the courses. So the Calculus 1 students who get to this at the end of the course, it's, it's difficult for them. It's just a difficult part of the textbook. Uh, and the students who start in Calculus 2, they are starting in the hardest part of the curriculum and it's un it's an unfortunate thing but it is what it is and when you start here you have to even have more patience than usual that understanding that this these first four sections are the most difficult in the entire course I have to remind calculus students two students that because they can get very discouraged here and I let you know once you get over to here then it's like it's all downhill through the rest of that course. And then when you start in here, it's like a breath of fresh air. This is really a gem of the curriculum. Um, and so, you know, I always tell them, you just have to get over that 2.05. You just have to get over that hump, and then it's all smooth sailing after that. Um, and um, so, this is the Calculus 2 course. Uh, I hope that you, uh, uh, that you enjoy your course. If you've ever taken Calculus 1 or 2, um, you'll find this to be a completely different approach from any of your previous courses uh, and I think you'll really enjoy it. Um, please make sure that you have the time required to engage in the course. Please just remember the Calculus 2, it is, even in the classroom courses, is the most difficult in the calculus sequence. So, you know, come into it with that in, in mind that uh, I don't want to scare you away from the course, but I just want you to come in with that kind of mindset and that kind of respect for the course, that it is the most difficult course in the sequence, um, and, and it's, not, uh, it, it's not one to say, you know, oh, I'm just going to finish this in two or three weeks. No, 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 not Calculus 2. Calculus 2 is a monster. All right, well, welcome to the course, and I hope you enjoy yourself, and I look forward to working with you. We'll talk to you later.